Welcome to Weather School for Kids. Hi, I'm meteorologist Lisa Spencer. How would you like to be a TV meteorologist? Well, I have got some of the tools to help you on your way. That's what today's topic is. It's how to read a weather map. Look at this. It looks like spaghetti, right? We've got blue lines and red lines and red L's and blue H's and lots of spaghetti looking lines on this map. So what does it all mean? Well, let's sort out some of the basics with highs, lows, warm fronts, and cold fronts. Show you a little bit about each one of those things, what they mean, and before it's over with, I hope you can do your own short weather cast. Highs and lows. When we think about highs and lows, we're talking about high pressure and low pressure. And in the simplest terms, that is a weight of the air. When we think of high pressure, we think of heavier air, sinking air. We also think of the winds blowing around that high in a clockwise motion, just like the hands of the clock. And when we think about low pressure, the winds are blowing the opposite direction counterclockwise and that air is rising because it's lighter air. When these two are very close together, we have windy conditions. But when you think about a day with high pressure, we've got sinking air, what kind of weather do you think we would get? Would it be nice weather or maybe stormy weather? It will be nice weather. And the reason why is because the sinking air is pushing out all the clouds. So you usually have lots of sunshine. Now it might be a cold winter day with sunny sky, or it might be a hot summer day with a sunny sky. When we think of low pressure, we think of the opposite. We think of unsettled weather or cloudy, rainy weather, or maybe even stormy weather on that day because the air is rising. And when that air rises, that's when we start to see clouds forming across the area. So let's look at those on a weather map. There is our area of low pressure, and you see the fronts on here as well. That's right, these are called fronts. This is a cold front, this is a warm front, and this is what we call an occluded front. Let's start with the cold front and learn what that means. I love the definition of a cold front because it's so easy to remember. It's the front of cold air. So this blue line represents the front of some colder air back here. You can see it's 28 degrees, 31 degrees. Out ahead of this is the warmer air, so 55 degrees and 62 degrees. Every part of this symbol means something. It's blue because blue represents cool colors or cold air. And these little triangles, they tell you which direction this cold front is moving. The opposite is true of a warm front. This red line shows you which way the warm air is moving with these little half circles. So this red line, this warm front, is the front of warm air. 55 degrees, 62 degrees, and you can see the air out ahead of it, it's colder at 28 and 31. But again, instead of having triangles, we have half circles that show you which direction the warm front is moving. A couple of other fronts we have. This is a stationary front. Let me show you something. Let's think about when we've got warm air and cold air coming together with these blocks. One's pushing against the other. Well, when it's a stationary front, neither of the fronts are moving. That's why we call it stationary. It's not moving at all, and we use red, blue, red, blue to represent a stationary front. This is an occluded front. And this is when the cold air and the warm air are coming together and the cold air just wins out all together. We call that an occluded front. That's a little more complicated. So let's stick with the basics today as we learn how to read our weather map. Let's start again with that cold front. Here it is, colder behind the front, warmer out ahead of the front with the temperatures that you see here. So what's happening? That cold air, which is a good time for us to remember which one is heavier. Do you think cold air is heavier or warm air is heavier? Think about that one for a second. Let me grab my balloons. It actually is cold air that is heavier, represented by the blue balloon. Warm air is lighter. An easy way to remember this is when you think about a hot air balloon, you know how they have the fire up underneath that balloon, filling the balloon with warm air? What does that balloon do? 
it rises. So that is an easy way to remember which one is heavier and sinks and which one is lighter and rises. It's gonna be the warm air that rises, the cold air sinks down. So with that in mind, let's grab these blocks again and let's think about our cold air moving into the warm air. What happens? That warm air is lighter and rises and the cold air comes up under it. So that's what happens when we have a cold front. With that warm air rising, we will see clouds forming and sometimes we'll get rain and even some thunderstorms when that front moves into the warm air. Now let's talk about a warm front and that's where the warm air, the red, is going to nudge just up over that cold air a little bit. And as it does so, we usually will find some clouds forming, but it doesn't always rain and we don't always see thunderstorms when we have the warm front pushing into the cold air. Remember, the warm air is going to be much, much warmer than the cold air when the warm front is moving in that direction. So 70s and 80s here, 60s and 70s out in front of that warm front. Now let's put all of those together on a weather map because this is the part where I want you to learn how to read what's on our weather map and do your own weather forecast. On this map, a high right over the state of Tennessee. We've got a low just off the coast of North Carolina, right here as well off the coast of South Carolina. And from that, is a cold front and all of this represents the rain so on this map we've got high pressure sinking air and we've got the cold front moving into the warmer air across florida and as a result we've got rain so how might you do a little weather cast with just this map and these weather symbols well let me give you an example i'm ready to go on tv hi i'm lisa spencer let me show you what the weather for today will be. We've got an area of high pressure controlling our weather across Tennessee. That high means we're looking at a sunny day today. There's a cold front moving across Florida, pushing into warm air. That's producing some rain across parts of Florida. So if you are looking to be outside and enjoy a beautiful day, you've got it. Because not only is it sunny, but that high the winds are blowing around in a clockwise motion, bringing us warm air from the south. We're talking about afternoon highs in the 60s. Enjoy. So see, there's an example how you might do a weather cast. Let's try it together. How could you do a weather cast right there at home? Well, first thing you might want to look for a U.S. map. This map is great because it has all the states on it. That's going to help you identify where the states are that you may be referencing. Here's Florida, here's Tennessee. But I also wanna share with you, if you wanna be a TV meteorologist, you need to know where all those states are without the names written on them. So you could print out a map like this and you could cut out those states and make your own little puzzle. Or if you already have a US puzzle, try to learn all the names of the states and where they are. Let me show you a little trick to this. Vermont is shaped like a V. That helps me remember that's Vermont because it's right next to New Hampshire. So that's a little trick you could come up with. Tennessee is a very long state. So start memorizing the shapes, that helps. And here's one shape that's easy to remember. We call this the four corners. So remember what states are in the four corners, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. Those are just little ways that you can learn the states. Now, back to our doing our own weather cast with our weather map. Now, if your parents are okay with it, you could cut yourself out some weather symbols and place them on the computer screen. All you have to do is get yourself some construction paper, that will do, and a pair of scissors, and just start cutting out some H's and some L's. And you can even cut out some warm fronts and some cold fronts too. And then you could get just some tape and tape those onto the screen. So you might place the L right here and perhaps the H right here. Another way you could do this is if you had some poster board at home 
or maybe if you had a blackboard or a whiteboard, you could draw a weather map. Let me show you. I happen to have a chalkboard here at home, so I can just freehand a weather map of the United States. It's not perfect, but it has the basic shape of the United States. Then I could, oh, let's put Tennessee on there. Tennessee is our long state. And then I could put on here our low, our high right over the state of Tennessee. And, oh, let's put the cold front on here too. Which way is it moving? It's moving south. We know that because of the triangles. And for fun, we could put a little rain on here as well. And even a little more fun, maybe you'll put a sunshine. A nice little smiley face. Now, let's practice doing the weather with this. So I could lean this right here. And again, talk about the weather. The weather in Tennessee today, it's going to be sunny because we've got an area of high pressure. But where Grandma lives, down in Florida, she may be seeing some rain today as our cold front moves through. See how easy that is? Try it at home. Now, while you're trying that at home, another thing that I would like for you to do, since we're working on learning all the states, we need to learn all the counties as well in the state of Tennessee. And you can see right here are the counties cut out. This is Davidson County. That's where Nashville is located. Lebanon is in Wilson County. Very important that you learn the states and also the counties in your state because warnings are issued for the counties. So example, again, if you live in Nashville, you need to know that's Davidson County. So know the county you live in and the counties around you. A really good exercise. You can cut that out and make a puzzle as well. Well, I hope you've had fun learning a little bit about weather maps and how to read them. Now I challenge you to do a little weather art. Maybe you can show me the weather map you've drawn. Or perhaps you could even do a little weather video of you doing the weather. I would love to see it. And send it to me at lspencer at wsmv.com. If you have any questions, you can send them to that same address. Or if you have a topic you'd like to cover, you can also send it to that same email address at lspencer at wsmv.com. You'll find all of my weather videos right here on my YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe Lisa Spencer on YouTube. Have a great day and thanks for joining me.